recorded. Oh no, it didn't even do that. All right. The Zoom, the Zoom lady was quiet today. Um, uh, hey everybody, welcome to another speaking event with Lori Osborne. Oh. Uh, hey. Um, just to kick it off. You and I, like, we met way back in like Lightbox 2017, something like that. Okay, we were trying to. Like, like 2019. Well, it was, was the it? first year of Lightbox. I don't know whatever year that was. It might have been 2018. It might have been 2019. Something like that. Yeah. Do you do you remember kind of how we met? I do. Um, I remember I applied for um like a portfolio review with DreamWorks. I think you were still at DreamWorks then. Um, and I remember like you guys picked me to review my portfolio. I didn't even like approach you, and I it was like the first time I ever got noticed by an animation like studio at all. So I was like, oh my gosh! I was like. This is awesome. I'm basically about to get a job. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I remember I went to the portfolio review. I was so nervous because no one had ever reviewed my portfolio before. I, I didn't realize that was the first time. Oh. Yeah, because um, like I didn't have like a lot of opportunities to, except for like classes at CDA sometimes they would bring people in to review. But uh, yeah, and I, I remember that you and um jennifer she was a recruiter i think yeah 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 um i remember you two reviewed my portfolio and you gave me some great advice and i remember you told me we can really see that you love cartoons in your portfolio and i i was like thank you because no one had really ever told me anything about my portfolio before so i was, I was really happy <laughs> and do, you, do you remember what was do you remember what was in that portfolio do you remember what it looked like like what what your materials were yeah, I I do. It's it's so embarrassing. It's so no 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 not at, all. at this point. Um, I remember I did like the little. I was trying to kind of match the shows that were on Cartoon Network at the time, so like Steven Universe and stuff. Um, and not so much what I like to draw personally, but I still it was like a board inspired by me and my best friend at middle school. Um. And the character that was me was basically trying to get out of school. Like, <laughs> was trying to get sent home early. Um, and yeah, I, I remember very vividly. I don't know if I still have it like on my computer, <laughs> but um, yeah, I remember it was like something I pulled from my own life, but it wasn't really in the style I love to draw. Um, and I remember you saying that like, you could see that I love cartoons, but there was like something missing. And I'm pretty sure it was the style. Like I was trying to match things I saw getting hired rather than what I wanted to draw. Mm -hmm. um, and that stuck out. And then I was really stubborn. And I was like, I'm going to keep at this. And then <laughs> it took years. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, I remember, I remember your work because it did stand out to me because you had uh, cause you had written the sequence yourself too and, and boarded yeah. it. And it's like, it felt very, it felt, it felt very personal to you. And it felt like it was, you were, it was clear that you had a, that you had a character, you had something that you were trying to get across in the sequence. Yeah. And it had a voice to it. I, I remember I got some advice from like a class that um, it's good to like pull from your life and like, and fictionalize it a little bit so I uh, me and my best friend we have very different personalities I'm kind of abrasive and she's very shy and nice and sweet and I'm like super abrasive so I was like oh that make a nice little like storyboard like so I pulled something kind of not a true event but like kind of our dynamic in elementary school and always because I was like oh I could definitely write myself like, <laughs> I'm not going to try to make a new character. I could definitely write me because I've been with me my whole life. <laughs> I think, and that really stood out in your work too. That like, that that stand, that I think that, that puts you ahead of the pack. That puts you ahead of <laughs> like, uh, uh, yeah, it, it just, it just, it brought notice. Um, <laughs> so where, yeah, what, where did you go from there? Um, and so basically, I just decided to redo my whole whole portfolio after that. And as you do, yeah, yeah, because I was like, this isn't good enough anymore after like a month. Um, and I around that time, I can't remember if it was right before or right 
after Lightbox, but I actually got a test, my first test ever, and it was um, at Bento Box. The show was Central Park. I ended up not getting it, but it was my first test ever. And again, I was like, this is so awesome. I'm so close to getting a job. Like, <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. Everything's happening all at once. Um, but I didn't get it, but it was a great experience. I like, it was great practice. Cause again, when you don't go to school, you don't really have a like set curriculum. You have to kind of do everything on your own. So oh, yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about that too. Cause, uh, cause you didn't go to formal art school, correct? No, I didn't. I didn't even go to formal college. Um, I barely went to formal high school. <laughs> Everyone should stay in school though. Don't take that <laughs> advice. <laughs> Personal story, not necessarily advice, yeah, but yeah. Um, and do, stay in school if you can. I, I do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I actually kind of didn't finish high school, and I got my GED. So I actually started college the year, like community college, the year that would have been my senior year. Mm. And I took a lot of formal art classes to like develop my skills. Like I took my, I luckily my community college in my hometown has really good like a really great art program for fine arts not so much animation stuff hmm. um so I worked really hard I took like a billion gesture drawing classes and stuff like that because I heard in animation gesture drawing is like really big um and then I somehow begged my grandparents that to let me go to concept design academy in Pasadena hmm. Uh, they were really not sure and really nervous because it's not an accredited school. It's just classes. Um, it took me like a year of begging them. And I was like 19, almost 20. And I was just like, please, I promise it'll be amazing. I, I'm going to become a character designer because I did not want to do storyboards at all at first. Mm -hmm. Um, but you had a you had a goal you had a goal of what you wanted to do in the industry yeah so I was someone who always kind of wanted to um like work in either comics or animation I actually wanted to do comics first but um in high school I tried to make a comic and I hated it so I was like I'm gonna work in animation instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wanted to be a character designer because I hated doing comics so much um but I was like I love designing characters um so then I planned on taking a character design class at Concept Design, but I didn't, like, I missed signups. I can't remember exactly. And the only class available was a storyboarding class. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll take the storyboarding class, even though I'm going to hate it. Like, um, and I actually didn't really like it at first. <laughs> I, was so, I was so below skill level compared to everyone. I could not draw fast, like. I was in classes with like people that ended up working on like Rise of TMNT and stuff. Like I was like shortly out of high school. So the fact that I was like in class with like people who were like about to break in or like had been in the industry and they're improving their skills. I was like, dang, I suck so hard. Mm. Um, and I, the class I took was with Alan Lawn. Um, He's a really great teacher. So I recommend if you guys can ever take class with him, you should. He's like a really awesome teacher and he's really encouraging. Um, yeah, and I finished that class and I told my grandparents, I was like, I'm never taking another storyboard class again. <laughs> I hated it so much. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I took some more classes and I was like, oh, I'll give another storyboard class a, a try. And ended up taking a class with Ben Juono at Concept Design Academy. And I ended up liking it a lot more, even though the worst, the work I made in that class, I think was worse than mm -hmm. my first class. Um, but I don't know. I just ended up liking it more. Ben Gileno, he works at Disney TVA now, like me. I'm, so it's kind of funny. I ended up in the same studio as him, but he gave me like the harshest critique I've ever had. <laughs> mm, like, that's Ben. <laughs> that's Ben. That's definitely Ben. And I remember he was like, can I see your sketchbook? And I was like, yeah. And he took it and he like looked at it. And he was like, this looks like stuff you'll find in Artist Alley at anime conventions. And I was like, ah, I sell all the time at Artist Alley at anime conventions. He's like, yeah, this won't make it in the industry you put down in front of me. <laughs> and then he said, <laughs> um, oh, I 
and well, we have questions at the end. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll be. Cool. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to talk, uh, preface that. Um, yeah, I usually when people ask questions, I usually collect them uh, in the in in a document, and then either uh, ease them in as as the conversation approaches those points, or we do them at the end. So yeah, if people okay. want to keep asking questions, cool. I'm, I capture them all and uh, try to integrate them in. Awesome. Okay. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Ben told me to just uh, draw in pen from like every angle I can think of if I wanted to make it an animation. Cause he was like, you can draw, but it just won't work. And I was like, oh. I cried. <laughs> I was like, this is the worst critique I've ever gotten. Oh, was that the beginning of the class or was that? It was at the end. It was the last okay. week of class. So I had worked my ass off all class. But no, I really appreciate that critique like a month later, I started really appreciating it. At the moment, I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> um, yeah, and then that's, that was the beginning of before the year, like the same year that you gave me the review at the end of the year. So I started drawing like really intensively in my sketchbook. And I don't think I took any classes during this time. I just mostly like focused on my portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and I started just drawing really intensively in my sketchbook, like all the ideas I got. I started gesture drawing really aggressively and like trying to make up really extreme poses if I can, because I noticed I really struggled with foreshortening. That was something hmm. I personally felt like I really struggled with. Um, and then I made myself do a board every single month, which Damn. was really intense and insane. Um, especially because I was working full time retail at the at that moment. Um, um, yeah, I would like stay up all night. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I would make a board every month, even if I never posted it. I was like, I just need to make sure I finish this. Um, and I'd be like, okay, this sucks. And so I would just never post it. I would just put it in a folder, and then I continued to do that. And then um, I eventually made the board that I showed you during that portfolio review. And I could see a lot of mistakes still on that board, but I was like, this is the best I've made yet. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I finally understand screen direction. I don't know why screen direction was the hardest thing for me to get. I like would always break the 180 rule for like mm -hmm. my first two years of trying to board. I don't know why that was like the hardest thing for me to grasp. Cause now I can look at it. And I'm like, ah, that's easy. Like, but I finally like got it with that board and I was like, okay, I was like, I think this is funny. I think this is decent. I kind of cut way too many times. I think I cut like so much. There were so many cuts in like dialogue, <laughs> but I was just like, I get it now. So um, I made that and then I showed you and then I made some few other boards like that, like a little after, but um, after I got the portfolio review and I got one test, I was like, I'm going to retake one of the storyboard classes I thought was too hard mm. for me. And that was Alan Wan's storyboard class. I retook it at the beginning of 2020. Um, and I redid it. And Alan was like, you have improved so much. It's like crazy. And I was like, thank you. I was like, this is so awesome. Like, and I remember one of the boards he was reviewing for me, he was like, I don't even have a critique on this. He was like, it's, it's really good. And I was like, nice. oh my God. Nice. I was like, this is amazing. So uh I'm ready for a job now. Yeah, yeah. And then um I didn't get a job. <laughs> <laughs> and then I tested like a billion times. Um <laughs> I tested so many times and I just kept not getting a job and I was getting really upset, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this was I, this was like 20, 2019 still, 2020. This was like early 2020, right when the pandemic happened I started test like every studio was reaching out to test with me I think like I used to have a spreadsheet of every test I've ever taken I don't know what happened to it I could probably find it if I look hard enough but um by the end by mid 2021 I had taken I think like 85 tests Oof. I don't know I don't know what was I lost all that steam <laughs> Um, because I also was afraid to say no to tests, okay. even if I didn't want to test for a show. Like I learned very quickly, I do not really like working in adult comedy animation. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's really just like if it was like I don't know how to explain this any other way, but like a violent, like primal type of show, I would probably be fine with it. But like shows like Bob's Burgers, which I love to watch Bob's Burgers, I personally just don't really like to draw that type of comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would still test for like every show like that because I was like, I need a job. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that really showed through in my tests. Like, and if I could like tell myself in 2020, I'd be like, hey, you don't need a test for Duncanville. You know, you won't like that. And someone that will like that will get that job. Mm-hmm. Like, but at the same time, when you're, when you're trying to feed yourself or you're trying yeah. to get anything, you're trying to break into the industry, like, yeah, any, exactly. any port in a storm. Exactly. And like, so I felt really desperate. And then, um, I tested for some shows I really, really wanted to work on, like I tested for Big City Greens, which I didn't get, which I was actually pretty proud of my test. So I used it in my portfolio for a while. They actually filled the position while I was testing. They liked my <laughs> test. So so. <laughs> um, and your test was good. I remember you showing me that. Like, that was a good test. Yeah, yeah. I, I was pretty proud of it. It didn't get finished because they emailed me and they were like, hey, sorry, we filled the spot. And I was like, Okay, but that actually put me on the radar for Disney TVA, mm-hmm. which that's where I work now. So I, I truly believe without that big city green test, I wouldn't have my job right now. Um, because it put me in front of the recruiters and um, the recruiter I was talking with at the time, actually she doesn't work there anymore. I think she works at Netflix now. Um, but she kept in touch with me and she would always be like, hey, you have a revisionist spot opening up on this show. Let me send your stuff in. And I was like, yeah, thank you. And then um, I, I think one of the Disney recruiters actually sent my stuff to Nickelodeon somehow, like they must have been friends or something, because uh, one of the Nickelodeon recruiters reached out to me. And then like, there's never like they all like, I don't know how my stuff got passed around, but it started being passed around. And they were like, hey, this show is going to be testing soon. Do you want to test for it? And I'd be like, yeah, of course. Um, but it was it was kind of awesome because all the recruiters started reaching out to me and I was like, <laughs> I was like dang, I'm so cool. Bring it, bring <laughs> it. Um and I don't this wasn't TV animation, but um my first two jobs in like animation, one was on an independent pilot called Battle of the Bands by Allison Lockhart. And I love that job. It was amazing. It was um yeah, Katrin says, woo in the chat. I helped Katrin get a job on that show too. It was an awesome job and the team was awesome. And it was like my first real experience working with a team, even though it wasn't really a full studio setting. I think there was like seven of us. It was really small, but it was really awesome. And everyone that worked on that show worked in animation in some way. Um, and I worked as a revisionist for that. And that was like an amazing experience. I had stuff in my portfolio, like helped a lot and then after that I was unemployed for months <laughs> and everyone was like Laura you're gonna get your first union job any day now uh it didn't happen this was under 2020 <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't have a job at all I was like I'm gonna have to go back to retail I was living off of my savings hmm. from Battle of the Bands which they paid us pretty close to union it was really nice um again I love that job once that show gets picked up, I'm running back to it because I, I love it <laughs> so much. Um, mm. But so I like put all that money in savings for my first job. And I was just like, this is for rent and food and nothing fun. I don't get to do anything fun with this. Um, and then in May, I got an email from Archie Comics and Webtoons. And they're like, hey, we have a thumbnail position. Do you want to test for it? It's paid. And I was like, hey, yeah, of course. I'll take it. There's a paid test? Yeah, yeah. Nice. It was only, like I've only had two paid tests and both times I've gotten that job. So Hell yeah. um, <laughs> so when you get a paid test, everyone, um, you're more motivated. It's <laughs> um, but yeah, so Archie Comics reached out and I ended up getting that job and it didn't pay much. Comics pay not a lot, but mm. I actually worked that job until June of this year. Like even after I started Disney, I finished up the comic with them because I love working with them so much. And it was... Oh. Yeah, it was super awesome and nice, and it kept me afloat. Like, it gave me enough that I could pay bills. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "All right, that's this is my job. I don't have to go back to retail because I have this for at least a year." 
Mm-hmm. So then I was like, if I get another job on top of this, I'll have a lot of money. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. And that, and that uh, equals emotional safety too. Yeah. Like you can pay the bills. Yeah. I was like, I won't have to move in with my dad in Arizona uh, <laughs> or into my mom's one bedroom house. I was like, I was like, if I get enough of this money, I was like, I could stay in Burbank. Oh, wait, yeah, because I moved to Burbank right at the beginning of 2020. <laughs> not the best choice. <laughs> it seems like it seems like a smart choice at the time, not yeah. knowing what the hell was coming. I moved there actually in like June, but everyone was like, everything's opening up again. So I was like, okay, I gotta move now. And then, and then yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not, not your fault. <laughs> Everybody thought this was gonna be over in June. Yeah, so I moved right when I thought it was gonna be over. And, now I just moved out this month <laughs> to my hometown. <laughs> um, but where was I? Uh, oh yeah, so I worked at Archie Comics and it kept me afloat. And then in December, when I was actually visiting my dad, I got an email from this studio, the studio that makes Coco Melon, <laughs> the like tree Moonbug. on you. Yeah, Moonbug. Um, and they were like, hey, we need board artists do you want to work for us like freelance? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. So I did a few freelance episodes for them for the show called Mia's Magic Playground. It was like, okay, it's cute, you know. Um, but then while I was testing, I, while I was working as a freelance with Moonbug, I got an email from Haley's on it, my job now. And they were like, hey, you, oh wait, I forgot, this is an important part of the story. I previously tested for them the summer before. Mm. Um, but I was going, there was a family thing going on. So mm-hmm. I bombed that test. It's probably one of my worst tests I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the directors followed me and kind of knows me. We both like the same video games. <laughs> so we have like kind of a mutual friendship that way. And one of my friends worked on the show and both of them vouched for me. And they were like, Lori is perfect for this show. We think there are, um, storytelling style it will be a great fit for the show mm-hmm. and so they graciously let me test again and I actually got to show my uh proper skills mm-hmm. um and then I submitted it and it was a blind test so I guess they just looked at it and they picked the one they liked the most and it, it was mine and I was really I was stoked I cried I like <laughs> <laughs> union union <laughs> I was like, all the shoes. But no, really, I got the email in like the middle of the night. I like, got like 11. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh my God, I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, it was, I, I had a rule that I wouldn't retest for a show if they rejected me previously. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I don't want to say what studio, but because a s- studio kept testing me for shows that looked exactly the same. And I was getting so frustrated because I had taken, at that point, four tests for that studio. And they were mm-hmm. all the same style shows. And I was just like, I, and some of them even had the same directing team on them. So mm-hmm. I was, mm-hmm. I was getting really irritated. I was like, I can't keep doing this because it's to the point where I am basically doing free work for the studio because mm-hmm. And I started being like, well, I could just send you a sample of a similar style. Um, but with Haley's, uh, they reached out to me. The recruiter at Disney reached out to me. And he was like, hey, um, we have a spot opening up. Would you like to test for it? And I was just like, I already tested for the show back in the summer. And I was like, I was like, just wondering, is it a different test? compared to like August of 2021 and he was like yeah it's actually a new test and I was like okay well I'll, I'll take it because I haven't taken that one and I knew I bombed the test mm-hmm. like um, that's, that's also interesting that you felt comfortable enough to like have that conversation with the recruiter because that that takes like a lot of like knowing your worth yeah yeah um now that you say that it does I think I was just so fed up with texting at that point <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like I was just like, I can't keep doing this. I was about to be like, that week, I was like, I'm going to just go into tattoos. That's something I know I can do also and I know I like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, because it was like 
three years at that point of almost getting things like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh it's just like lucy with the ball taking it away from charlie brown every single time that's exactly how it yeah. felt like i was so close to like getting it so many times like at every studio i think the only studio i haven't tested for is dreamworks i think mm-hmm. that's the only but every other studio i have i have tested for and i'm getting so fed up and like I was just like, maybe I'm not cut out for this. I was like, I must be missing something mm-hmm. like in my work. I couldn't figure it out. Which is, which is tough. Cause even though you're getting, uh, even though you're getting like positive feedback, it's uh, like you're getting more and more opportunity and now recruiters are coming to you and now studios are reaching out to you to test like, yeah, that's positive right. feedback. And it's tough to, it's tough to be like, is this real? Is this, is this actually, or am I imagining this? Yeah, I started like convincing myself that they must be doing it to be nice to me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, maybe I'm just like okay enough. But they were like, uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. But then I would ask recruiters, I'll be like, hey, what was wrong with my test? Or like I would ask friends and uh patrons in the chat. Patron was a big friend, I would always ask for tips and Katrin would be like, Yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I'd be like at, at first, I would have like, um, like there would be critiques, but then after a while, it was like a lot of these tests are so similar, right? That I would be like, I know how to do this, and then I just like I would get to the interview, and then I would be like, I must be bombing the interview. I was like, mm. so for a while, that's kind of what I was like, I must be bombing the interview because I always get to the interview stage. Mm-hmm. I, um. And I was like, I know I'm not the best at talking with people, so. But yeah, but once you get to that stage, though, it it's 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 just a preference thing. It's like yeah. this person or the other, and then uh, it it like it has so little to do with you and just with exactly. kind of the the random mix of that particular opportunity. But that's tough to that's way yeah. tough to acknowledge or to even like believe when you're not getting in for any information out of the studio at all. Exactly. Like now I can like look at it and I'm like, it's had nothing to do with me. A lot of times I would lose out to an internal hire, which mm. is like an unfortunate part of this industry. But um, it after a certain point, it is luck. Like someone just has to be like, all right. And that's what happened on Haley. I guess my test really made them laugh what I've heard after the fact Mm -hmm. um and I I don't know how to phrase this like it it was just luck I just happened to get lucky that time and there was a couple spots open and one of the spots was mine so there was a few shows I was really bummed about not getting on um one not to call out Nickelodeon I understand the internal hire about this but I got I I was being considered for Monster High Mm. And I wanted to work on that show so badly because I actually used to collect Monster High dolls when I was in <laughs> high school and like early adulthood. And I was just like, I want to work on Monster High so badly. I love Monster High. And I ended up not getting it because of an internal hire. And I was really upset mm-hmm. about that. But now I'm fine. With it. That's the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, I, it's just how it is. Like it hurts a little bit, but then you kind of have to get up and like dust yourself mm-hmm. off. and there's like a lot of hurt in this industry, I feel like, but it's nothing personal to you. Like that's <laughs> I, you know. I I um when I was trying to break into, I tested for revisionist on Adventure Time, uh, which mm-hmm. was a show that I wanted just because the pilot had come out and it had shown it, it had shown a cartoon network, and I wanted to work on that show so bad. And like I fully colored every single panel of my boards. I like wrote wrote an alternate scene and boarded that too. Uh, and I wanted to work on it so bad. And I, I didn't get that opportunity. Uh, and I was like, what's wrong with me? What the heck? Like I put in so much effort. Um, and then it turned out that they had hired Rebecca sugar for that. Oh yeah. Uh, for that role. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't find that out until like three years later. And I was like, oh, okay, that was probably the right call. <laughs> for them. Like that was, that was the good call. Good, good, good job. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. I've had like at Disney, I, Owl House was considering me on and off. And I was like, God, I want to work on Owl House so badly. But um, it never worked out. Like the timing never worked out. And like, 
mm. things like that. And I was just like, oh, it's nothing to do with me, really. Like, it's fine. So I'm going to ask you too, have you gotten feedback from recruiters? I mean, uh, uh, we talked about like that, that your voice was very clear when I was looking at your stuff. Have you gotten other feedback from other recruiters of why, like why your work or why are you stuck in their mind? The recruiter at Mint, Melanie, that mm. I haven't talked with her in a while, but she said she can really, like, I, I have like the right mix of like anime influence and like American cartoon influence that she that's something she liked because it was very much like something I kind of was just like creating my own voice rather than trying to mimic what's currently on and that was something I found really funny because when I was first trying to get a job I was like I need this to be like Steven Universe that's mm -hmm. what's getting attention um but then I was like oh whatever I'm gonna do some anime bullshit <laughs> <laughs> um and I ended up like just kind of creating my own voice and recruiters seemed to really like that. Um, at Disney, before I got hired on Haley, the first time I tested for Haley, they said they really liked my realistic acting because the show really relies on realistic acting. Um, and then also on the flip side of that coin, I tested for Middlemost Post at Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. um and I really wanted to work for that show because it looks so cute but like in retrospect I would have been horrible on that show I'm horrible at like slapstick like as much as I like to watch it um but yeah Middlemost Post was a big like they were like your acting's way too realistic you're way too restrained mm. um and that's not a criticism of you no, it's just no. a style misfit yeah I just didn't yeah. fit the show at all um and honestly, looking at my big city green test, they didn't tell me this personally, but I feel like if I asked for uh, feedback, it would have been similar. Like I was, I was kind of restrained. Mm. Whereas like, I'm a fan of big city greens and I know they kind of like it bouncier. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so a lot of my positive feedback was like my realistic acting really suited the show. And like, especially for like middle grade shows, I feel like it's a little bit harder to find realistic acting people that, Kind of want to do both like mm -hmm. middle grade and realistic acting because it's very um i feel like kids shows tend to be more bouncy right mm -hmm. <laughs> um so that was something that really stood out and um my anime influence is something recruiters have told me stands out because that's very trendy right now <laughs> mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I don't know if in 10 years they're gonna be like yeah i like your anime influence <laughs> still <laughs> but right now it works so um and then a lot of times I would get you have very good like anatomical structure mm. which makes a lot of sense I took four years of figure drawing through community college and it was very formal and rigorous so me being able to draw human very well makes sense to me <laughs> and how, how did you stay motivated during that period of like testing or even before that of like just going to lightbox and, and just doing sequences I mean you had mentioned that like you did a a board every month for a year like how did you stay motivated during that especially if you're not showing it to anybody like that's crazy in a good way yeah um I think I'm just really stubborn I, <laughs> I don't know mm -hmm. um I just I had this idea I was gonna work in art from age 11 and I told everyone everyone was like no and so at that point I was like I need to prove them wrong I was I was like, I don't care what anyone says. Um, so that was like a big motivator was I guess to like prove everyone wrong. I was just <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I was always someone that like grew pretty well for my age. And people would be like, oh, you should be an artist like when you grow up. And then everyone would be like, well, you need a real job too. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I'm not going to get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> um, and <laughs> I'll show you. I'm going to be happy yeah. doing what I love. Ha ha. Yeah. So uh, it was mostly stubbornness. I'm um, kind of a middle child and kind of one of the oldest children. So of my family. So I just have so many siblings. I'm a very stubborn person. Like I've just grown up stubborn and kind of like, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do it my way or the highway. And mm -hmm. I feel like that kind of bled into my work ethic. And also, 
I have a lot of stories I want to tell personally. I I always have preferred to make my own content rather than draw fan art. Mm. Um, and there was like um, a self gratification when I made my own stuff. I was mm. just like, this is my, this is like watching my own cartoon, even though it was just a storyboard. And that, like, my love for my own universes and my own characters really got me through the upset that I right. would um do like i wouldn't be able to like make it you know (laughs) (laughs) like i'm doing at a certain point like if you're not showing it to me it looks like i'm doing this for me i'm doing this because i want to see my world yeah yeah basically like that was like a big thing is i would just see like small sequences or beat boards of just like my characters interacting and i was like yeah this is awesome this is just for me i was like i'm not posting this like um and that and that what that's what carried you through like the year of doing a singular a single sequence every month yeah yeah a lot of those sequences are just like my characters I just like stuff me and my partner we kind of have like a joint universe we want to make into a comic one day Mm -hmm. and a lot of those sequences were just like discussions of like what how we would talk about the characters and it was like oh so-and-so would do this and I'd be like you're so right and I was like and it looks so epic if there was this cool angle and there's smoke in the foreground and I would end up just drawing it out so cool yeah how yeah. like how long how long were those stories were those like what was what was an achievable thing for you to do in a month <laughs> so not anymore because i'm kind of burnt out with stuff but back Fair. then it would be like 50 to like 250 panels mm-hmm. in about a month and i would clean them up and sometimes i would add tones which i don't know why i did that i wouldn't do that now <laughs> but um yeah so I would try to do 50 to about 250 panels of really like solid. There was a lot of work that needed to be done. Um, obviously, because there was like fundamentals I was missing. But mm. sometimes I would do, if I was really on a roll, I would do multiple boards in one month. But I would always aim for around 250 panels in case it was so good. I wanted to put it in my portfolio. Mm. Uh, I didn't want to make them too long. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would be like, it can't go over 500 panels or no one's going to want to look at it. Mm-hmm. So that was the big thing I was saying. It's really smart to give yourself like achievable bite-sized stuff to do or sequences to do too. Yeah, I honestly think I did that because I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to work too much. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I feel like uh, I feel like the rest of your story discounts that. Uh... I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um... Yeah, so I would say on average, it was about 250 panels. Um, And I used to draw a lot less per scene. So Mm. it'd be like a couple poses per scene, where now I would probably focus more on the acting in like a shorter scene. It would Mm. be about the same amount of panels. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so I would say about 250. And then if I like timed it out, it'd probably be about a minute and a half. Mm. Um. Do you do, do you think do you think it's a good idea for for people that are like that are in that period of trying to uh, trying to break in and doing their own work and giving assignments to themselves? Do you feel like it's a good idea for people to to write dialogue for their own storyboards, or is it? Do you think that's like a a, a you specific thing because it works for you? Um, I think if you personally like to make up your own world and stories, I think it's a great way to do it. Um, but another thing I would do sometimes is I would go into books. And I would find a segment of a book I like and just take that and apply it to either the book characters or mm. like my own characters. Like sometimes I would just steal dialogue from places because I, I was like, oh, this will work for them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, if you like to create your own world and stuff, I heavily, I don't necessarily write my own dialogue. How I do my personal boards is I will make like an outline and then I'll write a few key dialogue phrases I know that I would want to say, like the characters to say, and then I'll just kind of work off of that because I'm not the best writer. Like, um, but I work better off of like an outline or a script. Mm-hmm. I can't really like just come up with stuff on the top of my head. I kind of need like an idea. A structure, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I actually work really well off of scripts other people wrote, but not so much myself. I <laughs> tend to just like ramble. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think if you personally like um, creating your own things, I think writing, it doesn't even need to be a full script, like the screenwriting or anything. It could just be like, 
I want this character to like go to the store and I want this to happen at the store and I want the shopkeeper to say this to them. That's how a lot of my outlines look. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think that would be a great exercise, but only if you personally like to do it. I, if you hate doing that, I think it would be a horrible boring exercise. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's also interesting in that like, it seems like you kept yourself motivated by uh, not necessarily thinking about what does the industry wants, or I should do an action board for my portfolio, or uh, I, I need to fill out my portfolio in this way. It seems like a lot of those, a lot of the exercises that you've done have come from like inside and, and have kept you, have kept you motivated that it came from like some fire that was going on inside you that, uh, that would keep you making work. Yeah, yeah, I would actually, I would agree with that completely. At first, I was trying to kind of make what I thought people would want to get hired. Uh, but then I got so bored of doing that. I was like, so <laughs> bored. So I was like, I'm going to just do my own characters. Or mm-hmm. like, I'm going to do this segment for my favorite book, like stuff like that. Um, and then as soon as I started doing that, uh, I started getting a ton of like attention from recruiters. Like, mm. Whereas like previously, I had like, portfolio pieces but I would never I never really got noticed by anyone and then like the moment I started doing like my own stories or wanting to like put myself in it um I I started getting like noticed like and people were like oh this is so personal like like what you said to me when you reviewed my portfolio that was one of my very first boards I really put myself in but I was still kind of too scared to be 100% myself in that Mm. board Mm. but that was one of the very first ones where I was like testing the waters um and it worked I mean you liked it and you like pointed that out as an aspect you really liked about it and that like made a big impression on me and I started doing it more and more and then I I really like horror and stuff and I was always too afraid to add like kind of scary horror things in my boards Mm -hmm. but I started doing like kind of light childish horror and like I mean, I'm gonna be honest, the Owl House getting greenlit was a big motivation. I was like, oh, cool, I can add scary stuff to my board. <laughs> um, yeah, and like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do like my big anime fantasy story I like to like make up in my head. And I'm gonna do some vignettes of that and people are just gonna have to be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like, this is for me now, it's not for you guys anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, like people ended up liking it. and. It was, it was very like, um, I don't know the word, like motivating, I guess, because I was so scared in like 2018, 2019 to post my own characters and stories because I personally feel like that's a lot of yourself. You're like putting mm-hmm. out when you create something original. Um, and I was really afraid of someone being like, this sucks. And I knew it was coming from like my heart and I was like I don't think I could handle someone ripping this apart but then I was just like eh, whatever <laughs> like, I, was just, <laughs> I was like they're just gonna have to deal with it mm-hmm. so you've had the, done the, the, the emotional confidence just feel like, <laughs> like if somebody's coming at me with a bad comment like okay <laughs> fine yeah. whatever Fuck I, off. I just felt really comfortable blocking people on Twitter. I'm be <laughs> I was just like, um, if you even mildly annoy me, I'll block you. So <laughs> that's basically what uh, what started happening. I was just like, bye. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So what? Um, like uh, anybody who has more questions, like feel free to uh, keep tossing them out in the chat. So you said you said you started you started with comics, but then decided to go to storyboarding. Do you like? was there something in there that helped you make that decision besides, I mean, cause it's interesting. You said you hated doing comics and then you said you hated <laughs> doing storyboarding and like something uh, clicked though, you know? Yeah. Uh, funnily enough, I have worked in comics and storyboarding now. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> um, with, I think the big reason why I hated them at first is I kind of overextended myself per panel Mm. And then when I was like, oh, I can reel it back in, I started liking it a lot more. But um, I do prefer storyboarding over comics because a big thing I didn't like about comics was paneling, um, like laying out the pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just I'm not the most graphically designed, like savvy person. So it was really difficult for me mm-hmm. and I would never have fun doing it. 
and it's such a big point in comics to have panels. Um, so I just was like, never mind, I don't like comics, I guess. I spent my whole teenage life thinking I want to do comic books and I don't. Um, and then that's actually why I tried out storyboarding originally, even though it was the only class, but I was like, uh, I want to, I was like interested in comic books mm -hmm. when I was younger. So I guess storyboarding will be fine and maybe it'll be similar. And then a big reason why I didn't like storyboarding at first was because I was overextending myself per panel. I wanted everything to look perfect because mm. I came from like a more illustrative background because um, mm. I that was all I knew because I just kind of made up my own drawing stuff because I didn't really have like a teacher to be like, hey, reel it back in. Yeah, it's don't fine. tone your boards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so I, uh, what I ended up, I hated storyboarding for the same reason, it, but I was doing it so much rougher than I was doing my comics. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, okay, I must hate storytelling and I must only like to like think of storytelling myself. But then I would like, the reason why I ended up taking a server class again is because I was like, well, I always like storytelling. Like I was mm -hmm. like. I always make up my own stories. So maybe I was, maybe something was just not clicking about just the block or something. Yeah. 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 But um, a big reason why I switched is because I love storytelling. Like, um, and then once I realized I liked storyboarding, I was like, ah, oh, maybe I do just hate paneling comics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I worked for a year on uh, with Archie Comics and Webtoons and I actually ended up liking paneling for webtoons a lot better than like formal comics. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd probably, because that was more like storyboarding. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they print it, they just rearranged my panel for me. So I don't even have to worry about <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, so I ended up liking comics also, just not traditional comics. I don't really, again, like the layout part of comics. And mm. that was like, I feel like that's such a stupid thing to not like and change your whole career path, but it's a big part. So <laughs> I don't that makes sense. That, that makes a lot of sense. It, you know, again, yeah. you found the thing inside you that you like and that you don't like, and like had the emotional understanding of yourself to react in the way. In an yeah. Way. Yeah. So that was a big reason why I switched once I realized I do want to do like narrative storytelling. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of like assessed myself and I was like, well, will I like comics again? And I tried it out. And I was like, no. And then <laughs> <laughs> I ended up taking this comic job because I need money and I ended up really liking it. But I feel like that was because the format was different. I, I do feel like webtoon formatting is a little more similar to storyboarding. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that, that was the big reason why I switched is I just realized there's things I didn't like about comics and things I would prefer more of animation. <laughs> And uh, I want to reserve the last five minutes just to share embarrassing stories from trying, oh, to, trying to break <laughs> in because I think we could definitely swap some stories. Um, do, do you have any advice for for maintaining relationships with recruiters or getting uh, uh, or getting their attention in the way that contributes to like a positive relationship with them? Yeah. Um, so my biggest tip with recruiters is don't send them like a three paragraph email when you, you're first introducing yourself. Um, that's a lot to read. Uh, mm -hmm. My first few recruiter emails are pretty long. I was like, hi, I'm Lori. This is my story. This is what I like to do. Um, and then later on, it's just like, hi, my name's Lori. I'm looking for a job in storyboard revisions and storyboard. Um, and here's the link to my portfolio. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer it. And they, they will reply and start to create dialogue. Mm. And that will work as like, the, you'll cover all the same stuff, but it'll be a back and forth. And mm. they, that kind of also establishes a relationship. They don't have to read a whole essay about you, which I, I wouldn't want to read a whole random essay about someone out of the blue in my email. I'd be like, oh my gosh. Uh, and they go through a lot of emails. So these like shorter, more concise emails tend to, in my opinion, work better because mm -hmm. it also, again, prompts dialogue. They'll start talking back and forth with you. And then a few times recruiters haven't had jobs I fit for, but they're like, can we have a Zoom meeting or like, can we meet so I can kind of get to know your face and we could talk a little more. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think coming in, like you're talking to a 
person and not a like a job application tends to help a lot because mm. again most recruiters are very very nice people uh you know because they're helping you get a job basically and yeah um, and and they look good by finding good people so they yeah. exactly and also uh sometimes recruiters won't reply to you right away so i usually give it two weeks and then i'll send another email and be like hi did you see this and got it mm -hmm. yeah so like you know don't annoy them but like give them a little poke sometimes <laughs> again they're really busy people they have email boxes with thousands of emails that get sent every week like mm -hmm. um and so sometimes they'll they will miss your email and it's nothing on you like it's like even now at disney i will sometimes email our recruiter a recommendation and he'll even miss my email even though i have an internal disney email and mm -hmm. But he gets so many emails and it's not a reflection on me. He likes me just fine. Every time we've spoken has been very cordial and nice. He's the one that emailed me, but I got this job, you know, he just mm -hmm. misses the email and it's, it's just, nothing personal. It's a thousand emails a day and things go, things go lost. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I recommended my younger sister for a PA position and he emailed me back three weeks later and he's like, I'm so sorry, Lori, I missed this, but this job got filled. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah so again it's but nothing when you're not on the inside it feels like a slight it feels like a, i did something wrong or yeah it feels yeah. like they're like oh god it's jim you know yeah yeah but it's not I, I still feel that way like pitching shows and whatnot like i'm still like uh uh will you take my show pitch or did you see my email <laughs> about about the email hey yeah it's, it's... it feels that way yeah, sometimes it's it feels a little embarrassing sometimes to be like, oh hi. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you see my work? Did you do you like it? Do you like my show? Please, please like my show. Um, but you also like very clearly like in your emails, it sounds like had your website very readily apparent and had your website like up to date and like yeah. with your with your work clearly so that somebody could click on it quickly. And even your website now, like you click on it. It's like, oh, I see the boards right here. Yeah. Through it very quickly. Yeah, I used to have like a splash page on my website. And then I was like, that's just extra clicks. So I deleted the splash page. And then in my emails, I link it usually twice. So I'll put it in like the email body. And then I have it on my email signature. Mm -hmm. Like, so it automatically sends. And then on my Twitter, I have it linked very clearly. And on my LinkedIn, I have it linked very clearly. And on, I don't know if my website's set up like this anymore. I haven't looked at it in a minute, but <laughs> um, I used to have my email at the very top of my website so they could just copy and paste it. But now I think I have one that's like, if you're interested to work with me, email then my email. And uh, yeah, so it's, I'm, I'm at it right now. Studios and recruiters, NDA work is available upon request. Please email uh, email address to access. And then right yeah. below it is your first is your first sequence. It's right there. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, this is going to make it really clear. I also took my NDA off my portfolio because there's some leaks. So mm. if you guys have NDA work, um, I definitely recommend just putting it in a Google Drive. There's been way too many leaks. And studios will get very mad at you if you leak their work. So I had, I had somebody hacked my Zim in my Vimeo in order to see the Trollstopia main title like oh a week God. early. Like, ugh, oops. Yeah, I just put it all on a Google Drive now. And I used to have a fake page that you clicked it and it prompted you for a password that you have to email for, but there was nothing on the page. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but I took that off because I, I'm paying for my website right now, but it's going to expire soon. And I was like, I don't know. Pay for it again. Gotcha. <laughs> um, all right, let's share some let's, some embarrassing stories about breaking in. I can go first if you want, but if you have a good one, go for it. Uh, yeah, I'll share. I'll share one. I guess right now. Um, my very first CTNX. Uh, I I can't remember what year I was, but I was really young, and I was I don't even think I was old enough to drink. Or I just turned 21 and I was I went up to the, like this Pixar recruiter. Like didn't have a portfolio. And I went with one of my best friends and she was like hitting it off with them. And I was like, I could do this too. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, um, do you like your job? <laughs> and the girl, I don't even know who I was talking with, just looked at me. Like, this was a Sunday at CTNX. She had been there all weekend. She did not 
want to have this conversation with me, obviously. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, I work at Pixar. Of course, I like my job. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, cool, what do you do? And she's like, I do lighting for CG. And I was like, that's cool. And oh my gosh, my cat just jumped up. Um, and I was like, <laughs> and then she just like turned away. <laughs> <laughs> oh no and I was like oh, I'm so sorry for wasting your time like uh, it, mm. I can feel the embarrassment I experienced mm-hmm. still when I remember that memory it was just so cold she was just so it was like I don't blame her it was like 4 p.m on the Sunday of CTNX mm-hmm. and she was from Pixar so I mean she came from up north she just wanted to go home at that point yeah she probably hadn't had lunch or dinner or was probably <laughs> thirsty had to pee for the last like four hours yeah and some some bright eye and bushy tail student. She's like, hi. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, <sighs> I I can like I cringe at myself. Like I just didn't read her body language, or I could tell she was annoyed. But everyone mm-hmm. else I talked to in the animation had been really nice to me by the, before that point. Um, so I was like, oh, she'll be nice to me. No, she obviously <laughs> like I situation was read, slightly different. Yeah, I did not read the room. It was horrifying, <laughs> embarrassing. Not. My uh, the first CTN there ever was, I uh, showed up, and this is when I was trying to break in. I, I I printed out a portfolio for it and was was ready to go. And as soon as the doors opened, uh, I spotted Craig McCracken at his CTN table, um, and he was selling his Wander Over Yonder sketchbooks. Uh, Cause this is back like before it was a show when he was still like developing the characters. Um, and so I, I bolted in to CTN, like as soon as the door was open, like bolted in, went like rushed straight to Craig McCracken and he, and I think his, and Lauren were there to his wife or I guess girlfriend at the time. Um, and we're, we're like selling the sketchbooks and I was like, and I ran up and I'm like, Craig McCracken. He's like, Hey, how's it, how's it going? I'm like, look at my portfolio. And he, he like he took a second and he's like, I'm actually here, you know, selling these sketchbooks. Uh, and I was like, oh, OK. Uh, so I, I grabbed one of the sketchbooks and then like handed him 10 bucks. And I was like, will you look at my portfolio <laughs> and had the most fucking awkward portfolio review in the world because I was the first person there and other people were like lining up to buy the sketchbook behind me, like while he was flipping through my work. And he was very, very sweet trying to say something nice because my portfolio was absolute garbage. (laughs) But like, I thought at the time it was the nicest thing that somebody had ever done for me. And now at this moment, I'm like, Jesus Christ, that was awful <laughs> I can't, like thank god craig mccracken does not remember me in any capacity you get caught up in the convention atmosphere and you forget how to read body language completely mm-hmm. like i forget any social mores whatsoever and like again it was that desperation in me it was like this is the only opportunity that i'm ever gonna have to ever talk to anybody in the animation industry i gotta make this count Whew, oh. oh boy I'm still like I still have nightmares uh, about literal nightmares about that. It's so <laughs> that painful moment. to think of. <laughs> like I tested uh, for the the Powerpuff Girls reboot once, and I I think like uh I I, th- I I think I like changed my name on it. I think I used my dad's name. I was like, this is Mark Mortensen's test because I didn't want him to even remember <laughs> <laughs> that it was me. Oh God, it's the worst. That's that's hysterical. I. I understand the pain. <laughs> it's like that, like that, des- that feeling of desperation. Yeah, when you first like are exposed to animation, you're so desperate. You're like, I am around my people finally, and now I go and I'm like, oh, I need a coffee. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, chill out, just hang out, etc. Yeah, like, but yeah, I, I wonder if one day I'll be on that other side of that type of interaction, mm-hmm. like the person being asked for a review or something i'm sure you um, will I'm, you sell a show or something <laughs> like that and you'd be like you know just selling your sketchbook at the uh, anime convention and yes some yeah. hopeful person kept running up <laughs> <laughs> i'll be nice to you i swear maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i seriously i hope i would have the grace of craig mccracken in that moment yeah. that he had for me like i would love to pass that on <laughs> 
every time I get rejected from Pixar now, because I still apply. I don't know. You know, we want to yeah. offer Pixar. Yeah, yeah. Um, every time I reject them, I'm like, they're probably remembering that. <laughs> what, that was like 10 years ago? Uh, it was, yeah, it's been a while. I think it was like 2018, so it wasn't very long, but it was pretty long. It was maybe 2017. <laughs> I can't remember the first time I went. Uh, but it was whatever year I was, I, I learned how to drive in 2017 because I learned how to drive really late. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was probably 2017. Cool. Yeah. But gosh, yeah. <laughs> i'm sure no one would remember that and yet, but still and yet, and yet you're thriving now that's the good thing like <laughs> we're all we're all doing okay after making those mistakes yeah <sighs> um any other advice that you want to share any other uh closing moments i would say plug your your portfolio and your twitter it's been it's been I, there I, though I, yep <laughs> yeah i put it up because i just moved so there's tons of boxes behind me so i was like ah oh, i'll use a self promo um my biggest advice is I remember your work. And if you feel like you're testing way too much or you need a break, you can say no. There will be opportunities later to break into these things. Um, and yeah, sometimes it sucks to say no, but if it's going to be beneficial to your health, say no. I wish I could tell myself this right before the pandemic started. Because again, I tested like 80 times for a bunch of shows. Um, it's okay to say no. It's just, that's like my biggest advice. It's not going to affect who you are or like your work quality. It's the most it's going to be is you're going to be able to get like a good night's sleep. Like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that will help Mm -hmm. a lot. So, but it also seems like when you said no, you like did it in a nice way that kept the relationship open, which works. Be nice. Be like, Oh, you know what? I'm a little bit busy right now. And I I don't know if I'll be able to test, but here's some additional samples that might work for this test. Like, you know, and then they'll be like, oh, thank you so much. I'll we'll keep you in mind. And then that's just their polite way of usually being like, oh, okay, you can't test. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, but on the contrary, if you want to really get this job, if you feel like you'd be a good fit for the show and stuff's going on, try to rearrange your schedule, you know, because mm-hmm. that's what I did for Haley. I saw it and I was like, I really want to work for the show. I, I think it suits my art style really well. Um, so, and I was really busy and I was going through some family stuff, but I was like, I'm going to figure it out. And then I bombed that test, but then they remembered me. I somehow made an impact and they reached out to me again and I got the job. So just use discretion when you take the test, mm-hmm. you know, like, if it's not feeling right, then maybe it's not right. Yeah, yeah. Or if, like you look at it and you're like, this is way too much work. You can mm. be like, hey, can I have two extra days on this test? Don't be afraid to like ask for stuff. A lot of times people giving you a test are the recruiters, not like the art team. So usually they'll be fine. They don't know. A lot of times they don't know what it takes to draw a whole storyboard. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. So again, it can, it can be a conversation like, hey, can yeah, I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to blindly agree or disagree for everything. You can ask for leeway and stuff a lot of these people understand there is a life outside of testing for work and especially nowadays i feel like testing is a little more frowned upon um so they're a lot more open to being flexible with testing from what i've noticed personally so i would would agree with that also if you hear other people are getting paid for the same test ask for money (laughs) (laughs) very very good boots on the ground advice Yeah. yeah That's awesome. Well, Lori, this has been amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having Um, me talk. Yeah. And um, this will be up on the SFA YouTube, uh, hopefully by the end of the day, depending on when Zoom uh, decides to send the recording. Um, check check uh, Lori's Twitter, Lorevis, and LoriOsbornPortfolio.com. Very clear website, really, really great Twitter and a good follow. Yes. And also, if you guys have any questions or anything, you can feel free to email me. Um, I just didn't post my email on here because it's going to be on YouTube. I just like, that might not be a good mix. But I do try to answer emails when people ask me questions because I honestly believe animation should be more accessible than it is. Um, So if you email me, I might not get back to you right away, but I will probably get back to you. So, (laughs) and also if I don't, feel free to nudge me. I will. (laughs) Two weeks. Two weeks about it. Yeah, about two weeks. If I don't get back, feel free to touch me. <laughs> uh, 
Sweet. Well, Laurie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.